Uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to the International Arena here at Potters Resort for the first game of the day of this, the just 2018 World Indoor Bowls Championships. Without further ado, let's get the players out. First out, England international and former under-25 national champion, Martin Puckett. <laughs> And of course, Martin's opponent this morning, reigning Scottish International Open champion and world ranked number one, Greg Harlow. So just about all set for action. Uh, let's head up though to the commentary box where the voice of the BBC Bowls, David Corkill, is joined by former World Indoor Singles Champion, John Price. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, Rishi. Thank you very much. It's going to be a fascinating encounter. This Greg Harlow would have been looking for uh, probably a little bit of an easier first round, I think, John. But uh, this guy, Martin Puckett, can play bowls and he knows it. So we expect him to be tested in this match. Yeah, I certainly think so. I mean, he's been here before under 25 competition last year, so he's be confident coming into this match. And it's a dangerous opponent for Greg. UK qualifiers are very much of a, of a standard where uh, they're quite often internationals that either the under 25s or seniors make their way through the qualifying events and well used to playing on the indoor surfaces and, and that can work against the overseas because quite often they don't get that opportunity. Greg will be the overwhelming favourite for this match, there's no doubt about that. But um, it's one of those games where he knows he'll have to play at a, at a fairly high standard and, and be consistent as well. That's a good reply. Yeah, it certainly is, David, and that's a, a great start by both players. Two red. Martin would have been relying very much on his uh, practice sessions. He's had competitive play, of course. He's been playing in the pairs and the mixed and opportunities there as well to uh, have lots of time on the rink. And competitive play on the rink is so much different than practice, of course. And, and not only that, John, but the opportunity to have those hours at different times of the day, because this rink does change. Um, throughout the whole day from the morning right through to the evening yes that's right i think the atmospheric conditions are different in the evening these players certainly have no trouble with the pace early in this game four great balls and another one coming in oh, that's really good play brilliant stuff <laughs> mrs harlow interested spectator as always okay he's always here Always at every event, actually, when you think about it, John. But of course, Greg works at this venue as well, so uh, well known around the place. And just over the line slightly, good effort, but he's got no back position. And that's the problem for Martin because he can't attack this head. Greg on the forehand. 
can use that green ball. Just a quiet draw. Well, once again, the back is uh, completely dominated by Greg. So Martin's just looking to draw this in. He really needed the third ball to be behind the head, so he'd given up a, an option. Play on the forehand side, it's a quiet draw. You can just get inside his green ball. Good effort, very good effort. Better this time. Slight edge, didn't even. Oh, I was going to say I didn't need it, but actually, he did need it. An edge just to take the weight off. Real good effort. Needed a touch. It's a great attempt. Well, John, the first end quite often is one of two things either very good or very loose. And that was a very good first end. They'll do well to keep that standard going. Jack Lave, twenty six and a half meters. The way Greg was looking at that, we assume that was one shot. Good start by Greg. Over the last 10 years, you would say Greg's been one of the top three players. Great consistent record on all these events, David. Yes, he, he rarely loses in the in the first uh, two or three rounds. He's just gathers all the ranking points and keeps himself up there in the, in the top half dozen all the time. And of course, number one as well. Um, Martin Puckett, he certainly isn't intimidated by the reputation of his opponent. You can see he started well again on this end. Well, he is a senior international, so, uh, you know, that will always help. We're mid-tournament now, so the rink is still playing fairly swingy, but players have been changing their bowls. And Nick Brett has used three different sets up to now. He changes according to uh, the, the session and the time, John, so that... Because uh, the green is a bit flatter, and when we say flatter, that means it doesn't swing just as much at certain times. Yeah, I think it's based on the individual player. Some players prefer to stay with the one set. Some will experiment. Many years ago, the great David Brandt used to appear with his car with about four different sets in the boot. Got it this time, Greg. Ball clean. Oh, he has. Absolutely perfect. He also fell back from the jack, and that's a real bonus. Yeah, great ball. Just on the right line, good weight for the shot. Rolls the green away. Good reply. Just needs to run to get second. Yep, that sets up a chance. Gives him something to work with for the next one.
Well, that was very deliberate by Greg to play pass to Jack. He obviously feels Martin will attack this a little bit. Got the second shot so he could remove the red ball. Well, it's a usual on this forehand, John. We do know it well. Anything over the weight that's very hard to judge. But he has to arrive at this. As you said, Dave, just held past. Difficult shot. I think he played it the right way because uh, if he's going to get the jack, he didn't really want it with a yard. It was either just over the draw or play that pace. And he wasn't far away, to be fair. It's only the second end. It's never easy. Good effort. Another two good opening bowls by Greg. He's in the groove here early in the game. This is always a danger, isn't it, John? You know, it's uh, into the game and you play one loose end and all of a sudden you're under a lot of pressure because Greg won't let go. Oh, that's right. Uh, Martin's been very competitive on the first two ends, but a little loose with the first two deliveries. And Greg has been playing lead in the pairs, and that's always a real bonus. Doesn't have to get involved in the, the heavy shots or the complicated shots. You can just concentrate on, on drawing to the jack. Here's the correction coming. Can he make it for second? Well, it's close for second. Just dragged a little bit at the end. Thought he would have got a little bit more bend out of that. Roy smile. He thought he was better, David. I, I think he reckoned that that was right on it. And that's a, a worrying sign. And the bowlers know as soon as they deliver that they're going to be close. Again, quite deliberate, I think, with this with Greg. He's covering that position. He's decided he doesn't want to widen the target. Well, there's a good shot on here in the backhand if he wants to play it, and that is to get into the jack and move it to his own two balls. Probably play it on the forehand as well, but uh, the backhand looks like it offers more opportunities, and that's what he's going for. Now, is he just drawing to it, or is he using a little bit more? Looks like a drawing line. Second ball secured. Yeah. 
actually after the first two bowls, John, he probably would have been quite happy to have second shot or that head. It was building up rather badly for him. Yeah, it comes to a point where it's damage limitation, and that's what he's done. He's dropped three singles, but I say he's been very competitive at the start, so he's in the game. Interested spectators? Well, not really. They're actually looking at this moment in time, the two of them, David Gurley and Jason Greenslade, are having a very close look at their investments because that's what they do. They're smiling, so they must be happy. Well, you know, it's, uh, the Dow Jones must be doing well for them. I'm not being flippant on that comment either, because <laughs> the two of them would be looking at it. And that's another good start by Greg. This first ball within his punishing at the moment, within that foot all the time. Jason has a good year, be looking to retire. Once again, getting close in this direction. Good reply again. High quality. Moving over, forehand to try and rest the red ball. He's lying the shot at the moment, didn't want to touch his own. You can only really do that if you're comfortable on the rink, and it appears he is. Good, yeah, good stuff, really good stuff. Very well played. Dropping in nicely to the red ball. Good control of weight and line. He likes the backhand, Greg. Well, very much aware of uh, on this direction towards the commentary box. That forehand just holds off slightly. The backhand more of a chance of getting back into the head. You can make center rink a bit more consistently. And he, as you can see, he's made center rink with the white line or the white dot. Just over the weight. Martin can afford to reach this. Onto his own ball. If he misses that, he gets onto the red back one. An interesting choice here, John. Does he go strong and just uh, get the jack back into the respot, or does he just try and draw it? I think he'll draw because he can't afford really to be missing the jack and getting the plant on his own bowl away, Dave. I think he'll just play a conservative backhand draw, lose a couple of feet of weight. All depends on the pace. Has to be perfect on that line. I think he knew that was just slightly over the line because he, he hesitated after he, he delivered the bowl. I think he realized that it wasn't quite right. So Martin's pocket is going to get on the scorecard. It's just whether it's going to be two or three. This is one of you spare deliveries, Dave, isn't it? A little chance to make a third. Yeah, so it's a bit more difficult in some respects. I think when, whenever you've got something within a foot, it's really difficult to add another, but, uh, but it is a chance. Now, how lucky is he going to be? Mm. I think if he had to push the red ball down, he was spot on. But Two shots, Martin Puckett. A little bit unlucky with that ball. Nearly made the treble.
crowd really coming in for this morning session here at Potter's Leisure Resort. It's uh, always a popular first game, especially with Greg involved because of his occupation being based here. Looks after all the bowl side. under some pressure. Reacted well, the young man. Yes, being here last year is obviously a bonus and he lost out to the young Australian, Ellen Ryan, who was superb. Very impressed by her. I think she's uh, Australia's future. No doubt about that. Expect to see her in all the major championships within a few years and Played very well against Martin. I spoke to him after the game. He said, yeah. he said to me, he says, I thought I played well. I said, well, you did play well. But he said, if you hadn't played well, you'd have been off half an hour before. So it's uh, Too right. standard was very high. Yeah, Martin will be aware that he can't afford, obviously, any loose ends. We said earlier, Greg's the sort of player he'll pick you off if you play the odd loose end. Good adjustment, you needed that. Not the gap, though. Oh, he's got the edge. That's perfect. Perfect weight. Just to rest onto the ball side toucher. One green. That was a nice touch, wasn't it? Just dropping in behind the jack. And Greg might decide just to, to waste one here, just try and disturb it. He has got the last ball. That's certainly down on an inside line. Has he got the weight to carry it? Very close. Oh, well, that's set up nicely now, isn't it, John? He's going to force okay. Martin into having to play a, a draw shot into the head. Yeah, it was a good bowl by Greg. Didn't quite get the result he was looking for. But Martin needs to get another bowl in there. Probably got that a bit too thick, actually, David. A bit thin if he got the green away. Martin's looking at this. He's taking a timeout here. Um, Martin has four timeouts remaining. Yeah, personally, I think Martin's just got a draw shot here. If he can get another good bowl in there, takes the shot away for Greg. I think he's got no choice. He doesn't want to give the shot away, obviously, John. That, that's a, something that you don't want to do, but he just has to be brave on this one and go for it. He's looking really for the same balls he played before that would lock in. He's very close to the ball. This is a great attempt. Oh, good effort. No, he's managed to slide off that, so Greg can still go for it. That was the right shot, and very nearly executed to perfection. So a little half chance here for Greg Harlow. Inside line, gets onto the red, removes the green. Big try. Just outside it. Yep. Just underlines how difficult shot. that type of running Martin bowl is on this rink. Oh, and you see that? And the jack was actually off the center line, which actually helped that shot a little bit. But uh, so hard to get, really is. 
Second half of the set coming up, 3 all. Set score, 3-3 three, three after 5 Good minutes. stuff. Just filtering in. Chap length twenty eight meters. The audience is very well managed here at Potter's Leisure Resort. We've got the volunteers to do that and so what they're bringing player or bringing the audience in so they don't disturb the players, try and do it at the end of each end if they possibly can. And this first ball with Greg really has been very good in this first set. Martin Puckett is still there, three, three each. Hasn't been phased by that. One red. <coughs> Martin's last bow is 12 inches short of Jack High. Well, the last bow now will force Greg to change onto his forehand. Overweight, but it's a good place there. Good receiving ball. Small adjustment needed from Martin. Just giving it a little bit more green. Has he got the pace to get back? Cracking line in. Well, that's a good second. One red. see from that shot just how much Greg Harlow has to go out onto the line with the, the swinging balls. It's just under. A lot of players in different countries use a very straight, narrow ball, but uh, on the portable rink, well, you would think because it's so quick and swingy that a straight line ball would work better. It actually doesn't. It works against you. And um, it's been many, many years since a very straight ball has won anything on the portable rink. I think it was in Scotland with Jason Greenslade, actually. He used a, a very narrow ball, but the green was screaming that year. Yeah, I think that particular year, the green was probably the quickest it's been. So Martin's on the wide line. He's looking to drop back, out a foot more weight. He's just overplayed it. Still, it's a good place that if, if Greg was to be adventurous, which I don't think he will be. Doesn't need to be, just a draw. Needs to pass the front. And well played. Yeah. Well, he's made a definite double. I don't think the back one's coming into play. Two shots, Greg Harlow. Jack length, 27 metres. Greg, very easy delivery. It's always been the same. 
hand there for just to stabilize the delivery. It's, it's very economical. It's uh, very little to go wrong with it. Keep movement to a minimum. That helps the consistency of the play. And another immaculate play for the I'll indicate. Good wait and reply there. End seven now, David. It's the business end of the set now, and it could be at some point that Martin will have to be a little bit more aggressive. Well, he can't afford to lose this end. Um, if he loses any number of shots, he's going to have to chase very hard on the eighth and ninth end, of course, at this stage where on the nine end sets, doesn't change to 11 until the final, but uh, seventh end is key. And the pair behind really has to score. Oh, that's good. That gives him a chance. And there widens the target. This is where the tactics come into it. Greg looking to get inside the green. Well, he's just going to be short, but he is a protector for the jack. One red. It's still available, bowl out for two, possibly three. He has to arrive at this with foot or two weight. Well, he's going stronger. That's an interesting choice because that jack's going to get out into the open. Got it. Oh, very unlucky. Ooh. Well, that's what I was saying about that front protector. Without that, he might have got to the jack. One red. Just inside, he just went to the last couple of metres there, just gets an edge away. Oh, he would have been definitely in on the jack on the way, that target, he hit the target front ball, but uh, still there for him, he's still got second shot. Slightly different delivery there from Greg. We had the cloth in his hand, so he didn't put his hand on his leg. Well, I thought he might have tried to get past the jack with that ball. Well, he's got the respot. Mm -hmm. He has got a deep red ball, and it's right at the back of the head. So the respot's covered. If Martin does get to the jack, Greg's still going to score a single. He needs the ball out absolutely clean. Well, going backhand, that means he's changing his weight. Certainly, that's not easy. That di I'll dip away all day long in the backhand. Mm, that was surprising. Yeah, I, I think that's n really One about knowledge of the rink, John. You know, that's still a forehand shot, really. Well, he was so close to the third ball, I thought he'd stick with it. Set score, 6-3 after seven ends. You know, moving to the backhand was always going to be a very difficult shot. Still... Three behind, three he needs in the next two ends. He won't be looking to win the set. He'll be looking to get something out of it. Jack length, 27 and a half metres.
screen. It's one and a half inches short. I did say earlier that Greg would have been uh, thinking an easier match would have been great. But I think Martin might have been thinking the same thing because he's played well in this match and it's only Greg's consistency that's edging him forward. Hasn't needed to play any, play any big conversion shots. He's just sticking to the draw. The thing is, David, this is the World Championship and you don't expect any easy games anyway at this stage. And uh, I think from both players' point of view, if you can get through this type of first round, it gives you a lot of confidence for the rest of the tournament. If he gets the ball, it's a better ball, a better result for him. That's not bad. It's in a good position. It's there for the trail, but it's not second shot. <clears throat> Now, this is where Greg normally would be quite aggressive, John. He would play right through this. And um, I'm not sure if he will, but it looks the right shot to me. Takes all the danger away if he gets the green ball. Greg has four timeouts remaining. One green. Yeah, he's got a couple of choices. He could stick that backhand, which he likes to play just over the draw and turn the jack onto his red ball, or he could be a little bit more aggressive. Options here. Sticking with a draw, I feel. Decent line in. Close to the back green one. Well, Martin's still got the little trail to turn that jack around the corner. I think he has to take a risk here and, and go for that turn around to try and tuck it in. Yeah, he's just drawing on a good line, really. If he gets to the jack, it's a bonus. How's the weight? I think he was sort of mumbling away to himself there. Keep running, keep running. <laughs> he knew that was just, just not there. Mm, stopped in the position now to stop the backhand for I Greg. I wonder if you one. might see him be a little bit more aggressive now. Greg won't want to attack this too much. He's right on the front inside edge. He's going He's going down the line and waiting for the dip. Can't afford to be wide. That was a problem. Yeah, that's forced him inside. He didn't want to be wide to get his own bowl, and he's just pulled it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, you know, simply because of the danger of holding off on the forehand. You know, that's why he was on the front inside edge, John, just to try and hold it as long as possible on the inside line. Well, positions on the mat are very important. It's a, it's a science. Little chance now for Martin. Well, he's certainly on a good line. It's whether he'll just get back enough to turn the jack. Needs to stop. Well, that looks good for two. Two shots, Martin Puckett. <laughs> Set score 6 5 after 8 ends. That was a great double for Martin Puckett. Sets up a good last end in the set. Yes, his reaction there was more about he, he thought he was getting back to the jack to turn it for the extra for the three. Then it would have been a one end shootout. Whereas now, if he's looking to win the set, he has to get a double, and, and that's not easy, as we know, in the last end. And Greg's got that little bit of comfort to know that he can afford to lose a single and still get something out of it. Decent opener.
by Greg's standards in this set with his first ball that is loose. Couldn't put one outside a foot, really, David. Well, no murmur from the crowd. I think that's it, John. You know, you can play good balls sometimes out there and you barely get a clap simply because the standard is so high. And the expectations are very high Too as well great. from the crowd. That's the thing. <laughs> very Last good. Ball, five inches. Good adjustment here. Yeah. Yep, no sig number one. One red. Correction made early. Didn't really want to leave it to his third ball. Well, Martin, if he gets a movement on the jack. Trying, he's mm. trying hard. He got the gap. Oh, he got the edge, and that's enough. It's a set lie. That was second option to getting the jack, but he'll be very happy with it. Great weight on this. He gets the jack, he makes three, just turns the bowl away. Pressure back on. And Greg knows he's in the game here. Well, Greg. So used to playing that forehand runner, Greg has three but time with his front ball, it's not ideal. Two green. Looks like he's been aggressive, just the way he's holding his arm. I think he's going, yep, with pace. Stay, oh, he's close to his own ball here. Well, no real damage done. There were still two against him, but he's going to have a, a set lie against him. Probably will have to draw with the last one, John. Yeah, there's a little chance now for Mark it, Martin here just to tie this end two green. up a little bit, make it more difficult for Greg. See, he's, he's just wide, it never gets down with that weight. I think that's what he was worried about. That's why he spent the time out there. Time out means you get an extra 60 seconds on the 30 second shot clock. Martin has to think Five about this. He's, uh, he's got the Martin back position. That green ready. ball stayed on. Tell you what, the perfect ball would be about four or five inches in front, in front right yes. in line with the jack, leave a no catch at all. Absolutely. The danger of trying to get too close is to leave, leave Greg a target. Mm. I think he's got to try and go in there, Dave, to close it down. Well, I wouldn't feel secure in that situation against Greg and, and against any of the top players, to be honest with you. That's just not secure enough. I think he has to get a, right in there to get a, a very definite single shot, John, to get something out of the set. Puts the pressure if he can on Greg. Good line in again. All about weight now to get the bend back into the centre. Oh, he's just hanging off. Anything behind, he's OK. Don't want Jack High. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is not what he was looking for. And that was always a risk. He was brave. He went Pretty for the, the really killer ball. He's just hung away. Well, Great weight on this. If you got back, it was perfect. But he's just stood off. Yeah, it was the right shot. And I give him a lot of credit for that. He was just unlucky to hang off. Now if Greg gets that ball, he's guaranteed. <coughs> he will save the shot. Going Sorry. again. He's going wait. Oh, he's narrower this time. He's very close. Now, what's the result like? There's a green ball back there. If that stays on, he loses the set. And it has. Well, the green ball was pushed through by Greg with the previous ball, but that held on. Very good drive. Didn't get the result. Two shots and the first set to Martin Puckett. So, Greg, I hit the target here. 
A little unfortunate on the follow through. Good back bowl there as well for Martin, and he's got away with a two there, and that's a great, great finish for him. What's well, a fantastic finish, and Greg will be thinking, my goodness me, how did I not win that set? Two doubles, we thought it was going to be very tough to get two doubles to win the set, but Martin's managed it with good bowls. Jack Lane, 28 metres. And Greg will be very surprised there, because to be fair, he's probably just edged the set, John. Yeah, with high quality, I think Greg's first ball was very good throughout. And he'd be thinking to himself, uh, put him under a lot of pressure, and Martin's come through it. Certainly game on now. Well, he's there again. You want to get into the second set by scoring the first end after winning... The first set, but uh, Martin Puckett will be very pleased. Now, to be fair to Martin, he's been under pressure a lot and he's reacted to that, but not with stupid balls, John, with good bowling. Yeah, it's good, solid play. And say Greg will know that he's going to have to lift his game even further. He's played well, Greg, but it's a, it's a really good match, this, for a first-rounder. Just not making a pass, but uh, bearing in mind how much time that Greg has had on the rink, that is an extremely good performance by Martin Puckett to win that set. Good again. Yep, making the correction. A great drop on this backhand yeah. with the line bow, big swinging bow. Brilliant yeah. delivery. He's Just a, over the edge. He's a different player from the under-25s last year. Um, first year's always very hard when you're in the play and you only play one or two matches, but that experience is holding him in good stead at the moment. There's no doubt about that. And it's good lining from Greg. He's just overplayed it. Good position. Green. Every ball needs to have a value at this level, John. And you drop one two feet, there's a shake of the head. You can see when Martin, he knew that that had to be behind the jack. If only to have a value if um, Greg changes onto the forehand. Greg looking for a good second, possibly to draw the shot. There's the second coming in. Yep. One green. Well, Sort of blocks him a bit on the forehand, so he'll put a shade on this one. Yeah, good line with his last ball, Martin. He just needs to find three feet. That's okay. It's very good, that. Yes, because even if Greg rests that ball, he's not going to get the shot. One green. And... It's like everything else, you know, it's a, the first end of, this, of the second set after winning the set is always dangerous because the adrenaline drops and uh, there's a potential of having a bad end. It's like scoring a goal in football, John, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the, the next five minutes are absolutely crucial. You don't give it away. Well, you know, in any sport, momentum is great and momentum is with Martin after winning that first set. You want to keep it going for a couple more ends now. Not that you have a problem with that, with the Swans, of course. No, I'm not saying much about that this year, Dave. I should explain, John is a season ticket holder for the for the Swans and Swansea, so... Uh, One shot, Martin Puckett. I do watch quite a bit at home and text you when you're there. <laughs> well, it's not been a good year so far. That's life, though. A nice steady start for Martin Puckett well, in the second set. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting this afternoon, of course, because uh, I'm a Liverpool supporter, so uh, good luck with that. So a commentary on Five Live this evening, and uh, I have no doubt John and I will uh, keep a check on things.
a little mm. short. Yeah, well, so unusual to see that in a match of this quality. You're allowed the odd ball off, you know, you really are. But uh, it is a surprise when we, when we see it. Greg takes advantage of that. Jack Hall, yes. Greg staying on the forehand. Doesn't want to rock onto his red ball because that jack will spring out if he well, does. Exactly, you know, that just shows uh, how much he wants to, to play the forehand. He probably yeah, go a little bit wider and hope to pass the green ball, but it does look like a backhand shot, John. He's played it well here. Doesn't want a big touch on the red. No. Always played that absolutely oh, perfect. That is superb. I don't think you could do that from two right. metres away, never mind from there. You know, to find that gap and go into the middle without touching the red ball and opening the jack, that's a superb ball. Just overplayed it, a little bit too keen. I might have been tempted down the forehand, actually, there, John, because coming off the green ball was good. Was, uh, Martin, I think there's supporters of Martin in there. Great oh, fine again. Well, again, he has to be careful not to open it up, but he's getting the green ball, I think. Yep. Oh, that's even better. Oh. Getting the green ball first and then a touch Free has red. just made it so hard. Well, it's a nice little result there. Oh. oh, Jack didn't come out either, John, so this is a nightmare position. You have to go for looking for second shot. Will he go back to the forehand again? Well, he could reach onto his own ball, yeah. rest onto it, get second off that ball. Yeah, back onto the forehand. Probably should have been there with his third ball, but... Uh, Wants to get in, off his own, reduce the count. What a try this is, Dave. What a try this is. Oh, what a ball. Oh, that Brilliant. is superb. Oh. Well, Greg gave him a little bit of a sniff, but goodness me, John, that looked like a secure head. Well, that's a brilliant delivery. That'll give him so much confidence in trouble, and he finds one like that. Brilliant. And he's got the shot. Oh, <laughs> Greg must be thinking, my goodness, how could I possibly be going down to the head and thinking I need to play something special to get even one out of this. Oh, there's the blow of the cheeks, yeah. I'm not surprised. Well, he's asking the questions, Greg, Greg but at the moment, way. Martin's finding the answers. Listen, before we get any comments from social media, Greg carried the ball up to the head and can carry it back. And many years ago, that rule was changed where you weren't allowed to carry your ball up. But it's uh, very much within the rules now, and uh, goodness me, this is this is just. Oh. He's going to have to reach this and hope to get his own ball onto the jack. If he does that, he could end up with a couple, maybe even three. Looks like it will be an arriving ball on the backhand. I'm not sure if he got it back on the forehand was enough with the front green one. That's what he's looking at. Well, yes, he's turned his body. It looks like it's a forehand shot. It's going to be very close to the front green one to get back to the red. Looks inside the line to me. Yeah, yeah. he knew he had to be on the inside, John, because going wide was just giving him nothing. Oh, One shot, Martin Puckett. What an escape that was. Oh, dear me. Set score 0-2 after two ends. International Arena, Potter's Leisure Resort, Hopton on Sea, hard to beat. Great venue. 
Exactly, it's 28 metres. That's the players' lounge and the tournament office and the press office. And of course, the commentary boxes in the background there as well. All the other offices are lit up. Commentary box is uh, in darkness, which is uh, what a lot of people believe it should be. <laughs> Better not to see us, John. Yeah. Faces for radio. <laughs> we, we, we will hide behind our monitors. Just needs to hold a little bit. Once again, Martin. On green. Up there with the first bowl. He's only missed it, I think, on one occasion. That's an interesting array of players there. David Gurley and uh, Jamie Chesney and Darren Burnett, Stuart Anderson, and uh, who else we got? Mark Dawes and... Scott Edwards. Scott Edwards, yes. Scott to qualify, won his first round. Good player. Two green. And, of course, he's waiting anxiously to see who wins this match because that'll be his next opponent. Greg, looking for that adjustment, he's very close, needs to get the ball solid. Oh, he's played it well. One well. Martin doesn't waste much time. He's in confident mood, knows what he needs to do on this backhand. Touch. Oh, oh. I was going to say he didn't want to touch it, but that edge has made it a lot more secure. What an effort again. First match this afternoon, of course, the, the pairs with Mark Dawes and Jimmy Chesney. And they've had some big wins and played well against what would be the, almost the, the favourites after... Alex Marsh and Paul Foster. Paul couldn't play in the pairs this year, but Greg Hardo, Nick Brett, what a pair that is. At the moment, Greg's fully occupied on his singles match. Well, line two, and it's not easy to get out of this one. No, that was a good last delivery, though. Rocked in there behind the jack. Playing the running bowl, Martin looked for a squeeze out. It's as hard, it just hangs off. Yeah. I think mean, Greg, it's not easy, but there's an opportunity to add a third. Well, after his last Ball, if this really is a chance. Played it well again. Oh. That's a great end by Greg. Bounce back well. Yeah, so he really likes that three backhand, shots, doesn't he? Set score 3 so. 2 after three ends. First time in Martin's really failed with his last ball, and Greg took advantage of it. Now, to be fair, Martin's closest ball was what, less than a foot away? Yeah. He still put three inside it. Yeah, you've got to say that Greg won that three rather than Martin playing in a loose end. But that's the standard of this match. Jack length, 26 and a half metres. A murmur from the crowd because Greg's played a short bowl. As I said, expectations are high. Comes to the World Championships. Well, it's got a smattering of uh, applause on that one, John. Yeah, I've got to say that's the two worst probably opening deliveries from both players. 
We'll give them an end off though. Most of the first balls have been very, very close. An adjustment here by Greg, went onto the backhand and again he's nailed it. Normal service resumed. Yes, there's the spray chalk going on that indicates a toucher. And ball goes into the ditch, it stays live. Whereas if a ball goes in the ditch without touching the jack, well, it's removed. Just for our non bowling viewers. There's the correction as well from Martin. Martin taking a look at the monitor which he's got with him that end of the green. They can use the monitor, Dave. Saves coming down. Yes, that monitor shows the overhead position. It's just slightly outside the line. And Martin. One green. Maybe changing onto the forehand now. There's really no need to risk the backhand. The only thing I would say that he could last close that backhand off. He plays a perfect ball. Right. I think that's where Greg's going to go with his last ball. Absolutely. He just has to be careful not to turn it over. So uh, good weight needed with this. If he's playing what we call dead weight, then he wouldn't have enough to turn it over anyway, but he needs to get past it. He'll come round it if he's got good weight. Well, that's not bad. Uh, very close to sneaking in. No, just the one. The one. How short is the shot ball? The short shot ball, the gap is about 12 inches. It's 14 inches short of Jack High. Mike Davies, our marker. Well, that's surprising. Greg's slipping onto the forehand side. Mm. This is a more difficult shot, in my opinion. Well, I'm just looking at the way he's playing this. You know, it's... He had his own to rest off or turn over, but uh, relying on the perfect draw on the forehand. Does like the forehand in this direction. He's yeah. good. He gets the bend, now he'll draw a shot. He's played it well. Yeah, good ball. And it's hidden as well. And we would call that playing on the blind side, right. and knowing that if you get the shot, your ball's going to be protected and Martin will not be able to see that from the mat, so he'll be forced into the backhand, but once he can afford to play a little bit. Certainly worth arriving at this. There's a the shoulder off that red, as you said, David. Needs to hurry to get past the front red, though. Oh, he didn't, he didn't push through it. Tried for the dead draw. Watch up, Greg Harlow. Let's go 4-2. Well, it's an important end, that one for Greg. Consolidating on the three, the previous end. Now, you wouldn't get good odds to see that this might well go to a tie break, but uh, only, albeit only two shots in it, mm -hmm. and Martin can, just has to draw this set. Yeah, well, Martin turned the last set around from a two-shot deficit, taking two doubles. Track length, 29 metres. So he knows he's very much in this set. Greg really needs to now push on and try and close yes, it out in the next two ends to give himself a chance at the tie-break. Once again, this is his favourite backhand. He's staying away from the forehand almost all the time. That's not because it's a bad hand, it will bend back. It's just he knows he's so confident on that side of the rink. He plays that side so well. Martin's also played it well today. And again, he's on a great line in. Needs a bend to get inside. Good reply. Blow for blow. The last bow is an inch and a half short.
Well, he's getting the jack, just points it in there. This is how there's nothing wrong with the forehand for Greg, he can play it, but uh, just has a preference for the back. Made it a little bit safer by tucking it in tight against the bowl. Decent line again. Oh, this is a try. It's all very close. Mm, unlucky. Got to the jack One first, way. dropped away, but he's offered up a plant situation. The last bowl, three inches gap. Thank you. Three inches. Well, plenty of room, Greg. For Greg and uh, for the top players, well, three inches is enough to think, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try and draw that. No reason why not. If he stops in front of the plant, that'll help. Mm. Oh, well, John, there you go. Plan B. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's taken that lovely backhand shot away from Greg, which means now he's on the forehand and more chance of the ball getting into the jack and moving it. He's playing it very positive. He gets the gap, he's got it. Oh, oh what, yeah. a, what a bad result. That front ball just, yeah, it. It did completely wreck him on that shot. You know, an inch wider and he was perfect. Two red and a measure. As you can see the connection, he's so very close. He didn't want the touch on the red. Oh, what a oh. desperately bad result. <laughs> Two good seconds and they've disappeared. <laughs> oh yeah, right smile. He knows he's gonna have to draw something close now for second. Can't even really go for the shot. Just needs to drift in. That'll secure a three, possibly four. Three red and eleven. Well, the way Martin's been drawing, you'd expect him to save a couple of you, Dave. No. He could get second. I think he would settle for second at yeah. the moment. Um, Probably that's about the best he could hope for. Well, still a pressure ball after playing a, a forehand runner. You're back onto the uh, other side of the rink. Try and draw it in close. You say, John, he should secure definitely third with this, but is he going to make it back? Oh, he's Played playing it well. well. Oh, that's a good yeah. ball. Good stuff. One shot, Greg Harlow. No, oh, that, that's a classy ball, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Well, I mean, couldn't get, really get shot. It would have been a brilliant ball to get shot. He gets the second, that's what he needed. Keeps him in the set. That length, 26 metres. Just sneaked in, but it's not going to be close enough. Greg on the again on the front inside edge, so he can push the ball out on a line without having to go too wide. Got a great drop again on this side. One red. The one. Change this one. One green. Wow. 
Well, I would say that man has been very comfortable changing sides. All doing the game, Dave. He goes from forehand to back and normally draws a good bowl. He's not concerned about it, is he? to beat his own red. He drops now, he's close. Oh, that was a good effort again. Uh, perfect weight to draw the shot. He just needed a clean Probably. road to it, but uh, that's blocking the way a little bit now. Opportunity for Martin to add another. A little bit wider line, just trying to drop past. Doesn't score, but it's good there, David. Yeah, oh, that's a good place. Well, Greg will be trying to reach his own balls here and turn one of them over. Either will do if he gets it on the right angle on the high side. Well, he's on the backhand now. That's an interesting choice. Doesn't want to play over the weight because he knows the forehand holds off, John. Yes, he's going for the dead draw. Just to beat the green on good weight. Popped it on the high side. He'll get back with his pole. All about weight. I can understand why he played it, but it was... Um, the try just didn't quite get yeah, the drop at the end. It was a lower percentage chance of uh, getting the shot, but the forehand actually was probably, in many respects, a, a hard shot because of the, the hole that you get with that extra two feet. But he's left a shoulder now for Martin. Martin can get onto that last red. He could drop in for the double. Line in again. He's trying hard with this. Needs an edge just to straighten them up. Oh, yeah, oh, well well done. that's a beauty. Two shots, mm. Martin Puckett. Keeping yeah. the pressure on, isn't he? Sets score 5 4 after six ends. The opportunity is there, he take, he's taking it. Mm. Been here before, first set, Dave. Absolutely. Came strong in the first set, round Tottenham corner, you might say, in racing terms, and he's coming again. Yes, it's um, it's a very good game. Uh, 28 meters. Really good view of uh, our international arena. Good delivery uh, needs to run. Uh, six inches more, he was perfect. Just drifting. Now, Martin, if you can get one Two right minutes. on this jack, it will be major problems. Yeah, he needs to find just a foot on his last delivery. Seventh end, player behind, John. Be good to score. <coughs> needs to run, though. Needs to hurry with this. Oh, I think Greg will draw it now, mate. I think that was the ball. That was the key moment. Your last ball is yeah, a little bit of a missed a opportunity there. Now then, 
Greg needs to take advantage. Give him a second chance here. On the backhand. Didn't need a second invitation. Got a bit of a bounce back there as well, Jack. Could have been even closer. Yes, but it, that, that's why I said that was a key ball, really, for Martin, a third delivery. He needed to play that ball, John, because just three chances for Greg's too many. If some butts, of course, but. Possible it doesn't leave Greg a lot. Oh, that's. <laughs> Time out called. Craig has one time out remaining. Trouble, as they say. He's, well, the draw, I just, well, it's tight against the ball, John. You know, it's going to be so hard to draw. There's a speculative shot with the front red one onto the jack and hope that he gets the jack through. Any movement, then the chances are he'll score, but he might have to play this runner. Yeah, well, he's got to hit that perfect because it's, what, two feet down? Yeah, the shot's to try and draw and squeeze it. He's trying to draw. He doesn't, I uh, can't blame him because the front one's not very appetising. He's just, uh, is he going to get it right? He has played it well, but there's a green ball lurking back there. Has he hit it too far? One shot, Greg Harlow. Oh, oh well. big turnaround. Massive turnaround. Set score 6-4 after seven outs. He wasn't sure to right mm. to the last minute, but he's played it so well. That was a difficult shot. Great execution by Greg. What a brilliant end. Superb. Last few balls. Well. Is that a set saver, John? Set length 29 metres. Could well be. Certainly wasn't a very important ball. Martin can score one. He's in a good position to get a single in the last end. He doesn't want to lose the shot here because he's chasing a three then. Yes, and in this match so far, there haven't been many counts flying around, has it? You know, two shots has been a real major score. It's been so tight. man for the big ball and the, the pressure towards the end of the match he gets through a lot of these games by being able to produce the the ball that doesn't look possible All right. he's certainly digging deep here yeah. Line by Martin needs to run. It's very close. If he gets to the just past the red, just enough. Two and a half inches.
Just needs to get back to the jack. And he has. And that's what I'm saying, John, about the big balls at the right time. Yeah, a great ball again by Greg. You know, Martin would have been thinking to himself, well, if he misses with this one ball, I've got a real chance to build on it. But, uh, no mistake. It'll touch on the green, but that didn't make any difference. Time out called. Martin has two timeouts remaining. Fan club. They know they're on camera. Yep, they've just seen themselves on the big screen. He's going to have to swap sides again. He's done it a few times in this match. One red and a measure. He'll do his backhand. This is not easy again. Mm, a, hasn't exactly been the hand that the players have been favouring. You know, it's... And he's got that front stuff to get past as well, so you have to push it out. Hasn't got the weight to carry it, though. I think the line was good. Well, Greg gets a double here, and that really will seal the set. Four up into the last end. He's going backhand to try and tuck the jack around the corner of the ball to, to take that opportunity of getting the shot from Martin completely out of play. That's a double. Two right and a measure. Called back as well. Two red with a measure to win the set. This is hard, this is difficult. That's a dead weight draw, that's all he's yeah. got. When oh, you're sitting at the other end, and, or standing at the other end, you're thinking, surely he can't get out of this one. On this occasion, I don't think he can. He doesn't get past the front. No, just dropping on it. He was looking for dead weight. He, there was no point in flying through the head. I can't blame him if he's a little bit short because he's just looking for the perfect draw. But that would really secure the set, I would, I would imagine, John. A four up, a game of this quality, it's not going to happen. And if he gets a measure, well, into the tie break. Well, Martin's done everything I think he could do to win this match, and Greg's just produced. Uh, Really, really good balls when he needed them in the second set. You know, there's been nothing between the two players, some exceptional bowling. I'll tell you what, David, you wouldn't want to call this going into a tie break. It's been that close. Oh, it's been great stuff, it really has. It's Dan Blewett, our umpire for this match. Goodness, that is very close. Really close measure, this one. Measure the green, go to the red, and you have to go back to the green again just to make sure. Good. And it looks like one to red, yeah. isn't it? Three yep. shots, second set to Greg Harlow. That Five makes a triple. Right. One against one to see which one, so uh, yeah. toss to the coin. Martin's won the toss and give the jack to Greg in the first end. Now look at this set in terms of the score line. This is always going to be a problem for, for anyone that looks just at scores and hasn't witnessed the match. But that was not a 9 4 set. No. <laughs> not by Nowhere any. Near it. Exactly. Not by any matter of means was, was that a 9 4 set. A 9 8 set, maybe, but um, Greg really did deserve to get over the line in that one for the big balls that he played. But that's what he's there, that's why he is in the position he's in, really, you know, he's... Uh... Jack played for 25 metres. So we're into the three-end tie break. Um, it's not multiple shots, it's just win the end. 
And if we go into the last end, then the rules change very slightly, and I'll explain those if we get there. Right on line, centre of the ring, but just short. Now then, this is the time you want to play a front toucher. Interesting that Martin's moved on to the forehand with the, the mats well up the rink. And he has been playing the backhand as well as Greg. In many ways, that's called using your practice time well, John, because with the mat up, this rink changes very slightly. And uh, he's discovered during practice that the forehand's better for him, maybe with the first ball anyway. Now he's going back onto the backhand. Looks a bit pacey. Mm, it's flying past with this one. Not by a lot, but just, just over it. I feel very critical when we say his flying pass by 14 inches, but you know, at the standard of play, you know, it just seems to be a long way away, and it's not. The thing is, you, you know at this level that these players are capable of dropping anything within six inches of the jack and on, on this portable rink on either side as well, Dave. Greg has one time it remaining. Greg is in another timeout. He's looking down to maybe possibly drive the two balls. I think that's why he came down to look at it. But really, it's a backhand draw. Yeah. The quality of him on the backhand has proven that he can draw this. If he was to run the two balls, he's leaving a mountain of room. So yeah, I don't see him playing that. Up. No. He may surprise us, but I don't think he will. No, just draw on the backhand. He knows if he gets this really close, pressure's on. It's a decent line in by Greg. How's the weight? It's not bad. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Stood up a little bit if it had fallen down, it would have right. been so much better, but Martin will follow that. It may still go down. I think it's still moving. There oh, it goes. there it goes. Right. Uh, that, that helps in terms All of right. uh, of Greg, because it means the ball can't be edged mm. off. But there's still the same amount of room. Yeah, he's a bit unfortunate. Again, he fell back onto the jack, Dave, and he's moved it probably a little bit further away. Can't afford to be wide here. If you're wide, you do not get back with the extra weight. Oh, he's overplayed it. Yep, that's that's going to be the killer in that hand. Especially with the mat up as well. It's it's um, It really doesn't want to play with the dip at the end. It, it just wants to be very steady. And then Greg's going to swap to his forehand. He doesn't want to leave a catch bowl on the backhand side. The ideal delivery is just to beat that green. Yeah. I'll either draw a toucher or get to the green bowl and fall back in. Well, don't think he was playing for that because you only have to score a single shot, so he wasn't too worried. He wanted to match the green bowl, John, but... Uh, You know, the Martin Puckett fan club, they're having a little <laughs> smile to themselves. That covers the nerves. They're probably no, more nervous than he is. Oh, don't look at him, Martin. You, know, you can draw Martin that shot either side. Ball. You can draw it in the forehand because he drops off the green ball. He'll make the number one. Yeah, he's been playing good weight all game on either side of the rink. He's yep. just got to go with what he feels comfortable here now and just try and draw the shot. Don't race at it. As he said, if you play overweight on this length, it won't get back down. Well, so the forehand's there as well. He doesn't need to play the backhand if he feels it's going to hang off. Either way, draw within six inches. Backhand will suck you in because there's that shoulder. Oh, he's playing weight for it. Goodness me. He must be able to see it, but I, once you go out there, it's so hard to get back. Oh, he's made it. 
I think he's made it. Goodness me. Just got the edge, sneaked it round the green ball. Yep, it is indeed. Shot, what a courageous shot that was, John. Yeah, I mean, it was there, but it, it looked he was just on the high side. He's got a little oh. bit of the red and he's got a result then. I mean, oh, that could have easily man. locked in on the green. That was fighting it all the way. He must have made it down in the last two feet of the travel. Yeah, so as we said, it's such a difficult because if you get inside the line, if she goes away quick, so he had to give it a touch of green. Normally hangs away. What a good ball that was. <laughs> a big surprise. I don't think there's too many people would have thought he would have played that because he hasn't been playing any running balls. Great shot. I think Greg would have been seeing that ball coming down and thinking there's no way he'll get back to it. He's got a good opening if he travels. Oh, that's a good start. Fantastic game, isn't it, John? <laughs> it really it is. certainly has to start the day. Everything this fall has got a high standard to live up to. What a reply again by Greg. Is that most in to stay in this championship? Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard to beat. Oh, he dropped back. One red. Stood up, needs, needs to drop, but uh, I'm not even sure if he'll get the shot if he does drop, but that was a very good effort. Just giving a shoulder to Greg. To try and rest that ball and drop in himself and be even closer to the jack. Doesn't want to get the outside of the green one, though. Oh, it's dropped. Oh. Now, has that made a difference? One green. Oh! <laughs> the ball was, what, four feet away when it dropped, John? Even closer, I think. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It looked like it was sort of moving slightly, but, mm. I mean, I thought it had steadied itself and it was going to stay on the, on the running edge. Well, there is a shoulder for Greg to get off, and he has got that weight shot available on his favoured forehand, which he prefers. If he gets in the air, though, if he beats that red ball, you put him under a lot of pressure. Look at this, this could be perfect if he drops off. Oh, oh, that's good. It's still there for Greg, but that is good. Really good ball. Well, Greg has to get into this. He's got the front plant red ball on the jack, open it up as well. Um, gets the edge of the green ball, he could move it across onto the jack. And Greg's only got one timeout left. Right, so he needs to play this then. You've got a feeling he's got to attack this. Oh, yeah. He'll be into this in the forehand, and he prefers to play the weight shot that on this side. Two Ooh. seconds on the on that. Just got it away in time. Needs contact. He's got it. There it goes. Now, where's the green ball going? It's off. And look at the red ball. Oh, oh that's a result. Of oh, that is a result, isn't it? Red strike hit the target. He got the run through as well. Well, that's going to be hard to beat. That really is going to be hard to beat. That's a fantastic result, but a great strike as well. He got it absolutely plumb. Yep. There's the jack in the ditch. It's live, but it's a running ball through. It's a run through that's made it. I'm not even sure if he can beat it on this side. Well, he can beat it possibly on the forehand side. He's got to be very good with weight. He's on a line, yeah. Oh, he can't possibly beat this ball. Needs to stop. Oh, it looks heavy. Looks heavy, is he? He is. Second end to Greg Harlow. Oh, what a ball by Greg Harlow to save that. Oh, massive. Oh, dear me. Uh, let's go into the wire. It certainly is. And Greg had to play that with the third ball because he, the back position would have been covered by Martin. Yeah, and he played it really well, Greg. You know, full yeah. credit. You could say, okay, he was 
perhaps a tad fortunate where he ended with his running ball, but he's yeah. hit the target and you deserve it under pressure when you hit the target like that. Well, he hit it sort of half on the inside and that allowed his own ball to come through. If he had hit it solid, his own ball would have virtually stopped in the head and he would have been, uh, well, it would have been a long way away, one ball shootout effectively, but uh, just the angle he hit it with and, and he'd hit it well. And the run through, nobody can judge run throughs. Oh, no. oh, look at this, look. Uh, they're like a bunch of vultures, aren't they? They're all gathering and waiting to see what's going to happen. You know, Paul Foster up there, defending champion, and it's, uh, where's the blood going to be? You know what that's like, John, when you go to away matches and you sort of, all the, the local club come to that see you lose. <laughs> well, the thing is, when you, certainly world number one, and you're in a little bit of trouble and it's a close match, all the, the players tend to gather then, don't they, to see what's going on. It's been a great match, this, and, and both players, whoever loses, will be very disappointing, I'm sure. Yes, if it had been one-sided, there'd be no one up there. <laughs> now then, opening bowls. Not tight enough by Greg. Oh, once again, he's got the mat up. Just not backing it back to centre rink because of the characteristics of this particular portable rink and this venue does change in all the venues. Decent reply. Not close enough, but a decent reply. Only disadvantage is down near the centre of the rink. Greg does nail this. It'll stop the drive. Yep, you don't have the running ball. We're in the third end, and of course you can declare to burn the end and um, replay it. You can nominate to do that as often as you wish, but you're only actually allowed to burn it once. This is good. Just to yep. run again. Oh, it's a good well, ball. With the pressure on at this stage in the match, that, that's, that's very good. Always push through this, and there's no way that's getting back. Ooh, that was the one he really. Oh, it's, you just think Greg will get a bit closer with the third delivery. I'm surprised he hasn't changed the forehand, Martin, because he played the forehand really well. Greg looking for the same line, foot more weight to get to the jack. Very close again. Needs to bend now. Doesn't want to stick out. Mm -hmm. Just stay up there again. A little catch. Yeah, at least the, if it drops, it's perfect. But uh, it's still hard to get back down to that in the backhand, John. It just holds off. He's only slightly on the outside of the mat to try and help the ball get back. But uh, he knows if he's over a foot, a foot heavy, he'll not get back into it. Needs good weight. Yeah. Greg knows that's too wide. He's overplayed it. Yeah. Well, that was the one he wanted to too play right. it with, wasn't it? Because he, he wanted to leave Greg in a position of match against with one ball one to save it. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether Greg will try and get too close now. He doesn't want to widen that again. Mm -hmm. Anything down on that backhand side, probably two feet short, takes that shot away. Yes, yeah, so it leaves a dead draw on the forehand. The problem is he can't cover, the, there's a back bowl against him. He can't cover that back bowl right, and cool. close the, the backhand out. So he has back to make a decision here. Does he leave Martin the open draw and cover the green back or well, try and close the backhand out on the draw? Well, there's always that other option of just drawing on the forehand onto the jack and closing it completely. And mm. if he gets back to his own red bowl and drops it down, mm. well, that's, that's more or less it, really. Yeah. Well, he is playing the backhand, and uh, as you say, John, anything short will uh, make it very difficult. Well, it's on a wide line. Looks like he's going deep. Decided that there's a chance of the two balls going or the jack. So he's just trying to beat the green one. 
hasn't managed to do that, but not really. That doesn't really change the head an awful lot. You know, I don't think that's had much of an influence on it. So will he draw or will he run? I, I think it has to be a draw. Well, it looks like a draw. I think the shot is he's got to be Five brave eight, and go and play a dead weight, draw in the back and rest eight, under the red, and he wins the match. Yeah, and that, his own front green one is killing him with the first delivery. Well, it's possible, as you said, to strike that red. You've got to get it at a sort of three-quarter angle, haven't you, to miss the jack and get into the other red bowl. I mean, it's a sort of shot you'd get one one probably in 50 times, Dave. Yep. You yeah. know, you, it's a difficult one. It looks like a backhand draw. Yeah, he's just, it's going to be hard to pick the line out. His weight wasn't bad with the previous bowl, but uh, one bowl to take out Greg Harlow. All on weight. Yeah, has to be perfect. Oh, it looks like he's a bit on the heavy side. Will he get back in time? Just on his own. Oh, Cheer, oh, oh, What an effort. So once again, as we have often seen in these types of games, the champions come through whenever things are tough. And that's the reaction of Greg Harlow. Normally, you win a match, you just wave at the crowd, but he had that up there saying, I'm still here, I'm still playing well, and I've dug deep, and I've won this match two sets to one. Well, a fantastic game, there's no doubt about that, and uh, we had everything in this match. Martin Puckett, the young man, 25-year-old against the very experienced Greg Harlow knows this rink inside out. At the start of the game, Greg was putting pressure on end after end. But the replies were there from Martin as he drew in for another double on that occasion. But Greg playing the big balls when necessary, but unfortunately at the last end of the first set, he pushed the ball through, lost that by one shot. And Martin just seemed to have the answers, end after end after end. He just had the answers to beat Greg. And then Greg plays once again the big ball when he needed to go 6-4 in front of the seventh end. That was massive, that one. Martin getting back with the edge on the tie break to force the third end. Superb stuff. And there was a massive ball to come through for Greg Harlow as well. On the run through. And Martin's thinking, what do I have to do to win? But the champions get through, and Greg Harlow played the big balls at the right time.